Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Truly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time as we come to worship and bless the Lord. Give him all the honor and the praise on this beautiful Mother's Day. We wish happy Mother's Day to all the mothers across the land. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you, Lord, first saying thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our space in this building. Lord, we thank you for being who you are in our lives, Father God. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do, Father. And Lord, we ask that you be with us throughout this service, Father God. We ask that you just have your way. Lord, we ask that you touch the singer on today as she sings the songs of Zion. Father, we ask that you touch the messenger as he deliver your word on today. And Father, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds that we might receive a word from you on today. In Jesus' name we pray and the people of God say amen. Amen. On today, we are blessed to have Sister Cheryl Daniels to lead us in praise and worship this morning. And so we praise God for her on today. Amen.
Come on and bless the Lord, somebody. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. How many grateful people do we have on today? Amen, amen. To God be the glory. The word this morning will come from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5. And we'll look at Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And I'll give you all a few minutes to get to that. That's Romans. Get out your Bibles. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 and it reads therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only that but we also uh, glory in tribulations we have glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character of hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. If you allow me to use for a subject on this morning, trusting God through it all. And for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about that word of trust. Yeah. We talked about trust the process on last week. And this week, we want to talk about trusting God through it all, through everything that comes your way. Still trust in God. My first point is I want to uh, tell you my first point is that sometimes we need to stop asking why and start asking what. The realities of life really aren't realities until we go through some things. And, and we often ask why when we go through uh, the trials of life. Uh, God, why are these things happening? Why aren't you there? Uh, these are real questions that come from an individual that has real problems. And this stands as an everyday reminder that life will happen. This is a tactic from Satan himself to get you to doubt God. Uh, the, the doubt is the enemy's tool to discredit God's faithfulness. Tribulation brings uh, doubt to the believer and brings him or her to a place that he or she will question God's faithfulness. When we take a look back in the book of Genesis, if you look in Genesis chapter 3, you will see the enemy in Genesis chapter 3 was persuading Eve to question God at his word. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3, it says, you will certainly die, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For, for, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You shall, shall not surely die. And Eve had a failure of faith during this time. She doubted God's plan for her life, as some of us do as well. We begin to question God's integrity when we feel as if we are being deprived or we think God is holding back from us. And so we begin to listen to the liar of all liars, and this begins to mess with our minds and our hearts. Doubt is a terrible seed of wickedness that will help us look at God in an unworthy manner. Uh, so doubt opposes faith, or it opposes faith, and here we have a standoff between God's faithfulness and the enemy's lies. Which would you choose to believe is the question. The mind is the devil's playground when left to wonder and question God and his word. Satan has full access when we allow him to play in it. And so faith Christ uh, and the plan of God for our lives must be a settled decision. It must be a solid, unmovable fort because without it, it displeases God. If you go to Hebrews, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So there are two roads that are presented to us in our times of trials and our times of hardship and our times of uncertainty. It's the road of doubt is one road that will allow us to fall from God's grace and turn our backs on him, believing the enemy at his lie. 
Or we could take the other road, which is the road to God maturing us in this faith that we are journeying through this arena called life. He is equipping us. He's teaching and helping us grow in him through hope, faithfulness, and joy in Christ Jesus. We got to understand that faith makes you diligently seek God. And when you do not diligently seek uh, after God, you basically lack faith. Uh, this is a failure of faith. Eve in Genesis, she had a moment of her faith failing her as did many others in the scripture. This stands true even for us today. There are times that we too fail in the arena of faith. Even in that God is not done, he is the restorer of those who love him and his peace will be bestowed upon those who will love him and seek him and, and seek after him and he is our help in the times of trouble. Somebody ought to say amen right there. How many know that he's your help in the time of trouble? We often ask why are we going through this as opposed to what is God trying to teach me from this? It's all about processing trials. All and, and, and all about processing your trials and processing God through your trial. The second point that I would like to make this morning is having peace with God through your tribulation. You got to have peace with God as you go through those tribulations. We speak after many things that, that fail our troubled hearts in time of trial and uncertainty. We look for the relief from all the strain and distress. We, we are desperate to get free from the ties of hopelessness and need help to no avail when we place our hope in worthless fantasies that do not help. Many people today are seeking peace through fruitless means. Uh, they turn to pleasure, they turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, immortality, they turn to wealth or other dead end avenues. It's like a staircase that leads to nowhere. Pursuing such path will never bring us peace. Instead, we find peace when we follow the path that God has given us in his word. Those who keep the law of God in their hearts and obey it in their actions add peace to their lives. Rather than seeking peace as an end, we should seek to follow Christ. When we do where we, uh, uh, where we find that peace comes as a side effect that we receive from him. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of the Lord. I believe one of the main avenues to keeping your mind and your heart right with God is knowing that God has plans to bless you and to sustain you. If you go to the book of Jeremiah, it tells us this truth and helps us to understand that his plans are greater than ours. For well, I know the plans I have for you desires the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. He also gives us security, a security blanket to be consoled in when he tells us in Hebrews that he will always be there for us. In the book of Hebrews it says, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. You ought to praise God right there that we serve a God that will not leave us nor forsake us. Knowing this truth is like knowing that you are about to face a situation but you know uh, that your daddy is there to help you out no matter what. Uh, that protection, that security that you feel is unbeatable. It's reassuring having the peace of knowing that no matter what the situation is, that God has your back. Peace is something everyone is seeking after. We are seeking after a peace of mind. We're seeking after a peace of heart. We're seeking after a peace of love. But reality stands true this morning that the only peace that we can truly receive is the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace which is Jesus Christ and now we are faced with these problems and I want you to know that it's evident that these problems are not just going to go away these problems that are stressing you out that are consuming your rest your health right now may be at risk but there are mind battles that are raging at every moment of your day and so the question becomes what do you do? Who do you go to? Who do you call out to? I'm glad you asked for you find in the Bible in the book of Psalms that it says the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in the time of trouble. Those who know 
your name, trust in you. For Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. So when in these moments of hardship and uncertainty, it is God we ought to seek after the knowing, the all-knowing, the knowledgeable God, the God of the heaven and Jesus Christ, the safest place in all the world is to be in the will of God and the safest protection in all the world is to know the name of God. The third point that I've got to make on this morning, and this is, this is a good point here, is that hope never disappoints. If you go to Psalms 84, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. This is hope in the very word of God that we read and that we believe that we have hope. I have the hope ready for us to embrace. This hope is sure. It is true. And we know that it is God. We are in need of hope. Every person on planet looks for hope. Uh, some look at things that failed him. But thank God of heaven, through the name of Jesus Christ, he never fails those who love and seek after him. When in despair and sorrow, there is a need for hope. There's a desire for things to get better, for us to come out with a victory. We want to be a joyful people. We want to smile and talk of all the good times. But how will you recognize good without going through the bad? See, I, I, I'd rather serve God through the storm than not have him and get wrecked in the storm. God wants to bless your life. How many of you believe that on today? The Bible tells us so this morning. Like a good father, he does not want to withhold anything from you. If you go to Psalms 9, it says, But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. God's plan for you is full of life and hope and inspiration. It is full of good things and not of evil. It is full of his grace and his favor for you. But you would never step into this promise if you never seek after him as one searches endlessly for treasures. God is a good father. God is a holy father. And just God whose resources, his resources that he has for those who love him, they are endless. No trouble should keep you from the one who spoke to the raging sea. He told the sea to calm down. He told the sea to be still. See, when we are going through these storms, we can cry out to our Father in heaven, the one that calmed the sea, the one that told the sea to be still. He will, with his words, calm the raging sea in our defense. You ought to praise God right there. So we got to learn as a people to trust God through it all. The Bible says, the Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Bible also says, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and he's my defense. He has become my salvation. This is the hope that we have to have. We have to have in Christ. But Christ never disappoints because it stands true and it defeats all who oppose it. Child of God, trust in the Lord and call his name. For he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be praised. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, he is worthy. Do I have any believers in him? How you process God through this life is how you'll be able to either see God move on your behalf or refuse God to be your God. The only way to process these things properly is if you actually know this wonderful God. And this God that I'm preaching of this morning. Processing God through all of your trials. Trusting God through it all. 
It's an important thing to do. I know what the world looks like right now. And I know what so many people say. But I just believe today that I trust in God. I trust in God that the situation that's going on with this pandemic, I trust and believe that God will see all of us through. I trust in God with the senseless murders that have happened to these young black men. I, 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 tr I still trust in God that he will show up and turn things around. I still believe that we serve a God that can bring us all together in unity and love. I still believe that God is in control no matter who's in the White House, no matter who's at the State House. I still serve a God that's in control of it all. How many believe that on today? Do you believe that on today? If you believe it, you got to begin to trust God through it all. Through it all. And don't be mistaken. While you desire to trust him through it all, be mindful of the attacks the enemy's going to throw. Be mindful of the doubts that he's going to put in your head. But I, I, I just stopped by today to tell you, stand on the word of God and trust on him in spite of it. I, I thank God for the Bible. So many people question whether everything in the Bible is real. But when you go through these scriptures and you have this example of that little temptation that Eve went through where she lost her faith, her faith failed listening to Satan. That happens to us today. That happens to us today. So many of us, we lose our faith. We lose our trust by listening to things in our ear. And it's nothing but Satan. Listen, we got to turn a deaf ear to all that doubt. Everything that's not like God. We, we got to turn a deaf ear to it. You got to understand that we serve a God that wants us to prosper. And, and all we got to do is just trust in his word through it all. Trust God through it all. 2020 has not been a perfect year. And there's been times where I felt like I was going to lose my mind. Bottled down with pain and bottled down with hurt and, and in a situation where I'm like, God, what, what just what is going on? But as I meditate and pray to the Lord, I don't have the answers to all the things that we have experienced in this year. But one thing that God told me, he said, just trust me. Everything will be all right. Yeah, you're going to have to cry sometime. You may lose loved ones here and there. But I am still faithful. Trust me through it all. If you trust me through it all, you can walk through all of these situations as pure gold. I don't know how many have experienced things that you felt like you was going to lose your mind. But I'm here today to tell you that God is a mind regulator if you just trust in him. I don't know if you've ever been weak in your body, suffering with illness. But I'm here today to tell you that God is a healer if you trust in him. I don't know if you've been down to your last dime. But I'm here today to tell you that God will bless you in more ways than nothing. All you can ever imagine. All you got to do. It's just trusting God through all your situations. This morning, trust in God. Trust in God. Maybe you out there under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. I tell you today that now is the time to give your life to him. Begin to trust him fully with your life. Hallelujah. All you have to do is pray unto the Lord and just ask the Lord to forgive you of all of your sins and confess with your mouth that you believe within your heart that he raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And you believe in him that he is your Lord and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. That's called the prayer of salvation. If you just pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart, he will accept you on today. Will there be one? Will there be one? Hallelujah. And if you need any guidance, you can always reach out to me. 
by email, which is J-O-N-D-F-R-D at gmail.com. You can put a note in this chat box on this video. Hallelujah. Or you can contact me by phone, which is 919-302-3740. We would love to hear from you. Even if it's nothing but saying, Pastor, can you just pray for me? Hallelujah. If you need prayer uh, and, and you want us to pray for you, put your name in the chat or get in contact with me through those avenues that I've just uh, told you about today. And we will pray for you. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word on today. Father, we thank you that we can come to you, Lord, and we can put our faith, our hope, and our trust in you, Father. Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are still sick among us, Father God. We pray for those that are going through bereavement. Father, we just lift them up to you right now, Father, for we know that you are a comforter, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that may be battling depression right now, Father. Lord, that you will stop by